Have you ever wondered what happens inside a modern Grand Prix team? ING is making Formula One easier by giving you a pass behind the scenes to find out. In reality, there never is a blank piece of paper, unless you're a new startup team, of course. For us, it evolves year on year. Initially, to come up with the right design concept, I start with some hand drawn sketches. Once I've got a few visuals that I think have got potential, I then move on to computer. We spend a long time trying to get a balance of colours so that from whichever angle the car is viewed, either onboard cameras or trackside cameras or even just media photographers, that there's a colour balance using all the colours of the car. One of the tricks we have to use to help the logos read properly on television is to cheat with the colour white. This is the colour white we use on the racing car, but this is true white. Once we've chosen the colour, that's just the start of the process, and we need to understand how the light works on the paint. We can understand that by painting on a flat surface like this, but we can understand so much more by using a modelling shell, which shows us how the highlights and shade work across the paint. The painting process starts with tape lines on the car to indicate the positions of the colour areas and the paint is applied using what they call a primer filler just like in any body shop and then we put a basic colour and then what we do that is slightly more specialised, the reflective element, we put that over the top of the paint. Also I'm trying to get it as thin as possible so that we don't add weight to the car. The final finish of the paint is absolutely critical. If we were to leave bumps and ridges at the joint points, it would certainly affect the way the air flows over the bodywork. The colour scheme enhances the placement of the logos. It's almost like framing the picture, so to speak. For example, ING's logo is basically two parts, the text element, which is very bold, and then the lion symbol, which has a lot of detail in it. It would be very easy to lose that on television. We use a very low-tech way of applying the logos. The stickers are made up of basically a piece of adhesive vinyl and they can be put on either dry or we can put it on wet and then that allows us to slide the logo around into the right position before we smooth it out. To create the ultimate livery, it would be much easier to have a lot fewer winglets and chimneys and all the add-ons which make the aerodynamics work. For many years we've had to deal with that, but I understand for 2009 I'm going to get my wish.